Food is one of the most important components of any culture, embodying a part of the identity unique to each community. The local food culture varies by geography and people in each region and can illustrate many aspects of the culture as a whole. However, in the globalizing world today, cultures from all over the globe are more connected than ever, and cuisines, too, are flowing across the borders, producing a hybridization of multiple cultures. In the case of Thailand and the United States, this flow is quite literally moving across the hemispheres. Thailand, like many other countries in Southeast Asia, received much of its American influence during the Vietnam War. In fact, it is believed that the first ever American-style restaurant was opened in the 1960s when a part of the American army resided in Thailand. At first, these restaurants aimed at serving friendly food to the soldiers fighting far from home. But it wasn't until 1978 when the American fast food chain, Mr. Donut, opened its first store in Thailand that Western food became popular. Now, McDonald's is the biggest fast food franchise in Thailand, with over 240 stores operating nationwide. The clearest aspect of the hybridization of American food in Thailand would be the menus offered at these fast food locations. As it turns out, while the novelty of Western food could attract most of the customers, the bland taste of these fast foods still faced competition from more flavorful local menus. McDonald's then introduced localized variants of the classic menus, such as this spicy fried chicken. Spicy red hot sauce style mai, pet ron jat jat to kreung, ao pheum ton 59 baht. Garlic chicken rice. Spicy chicken rice. Khao nam tok pisaet pom khok phing 69 baht to kreung. Khao nam tok sa. And many authors, these adapted menus are essential to the running of the businesses, as can be seen from another fast food chain, a and which failed to provide localized menus to its customers and thus have fell into obscurity with less than 30 branches nationwide. This shows that profitability of businesses can be one incentive for cultural hybridization. But more certainly, the flow of cultures in the age of globalization is far from unidirectional, as evidenced from the existence of Thai restaurants all over the United States. Since the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965, immigrants from countries all over the world, Thailand included, flowed into the country, playing a key role in shaping the country's identity. Thai food, too, came with its flow, with the first restaurant possibly opened in 1969 in Los Angeles, the home of the first American Thai town, and a city with the largest Thai community outside of Asia. The first customer base of Thai food was the Thais themselves, craving for the flavorful taste of the traditional food. But soon, Thai food quickly gained popularity among the white customers too. Similarly to American food in Thailand, Thai food in America too has to be adapted to cater to the taste of the local customers. The most obvious modification would be the much milder taste than the original recipe, as Western consumers don't enjoy too spicy food. The most popular menus including Pad Thai, stir fry noodles, Masaman, a sweet curry, and Penang, a thick curry, are watered down to appeal to the Western's taste. However, unlike the fast food chains in Thailand with giant supply chain, another constraint in cooking Thai food here in the US is the hard to find ingredients, including lemongrass, fish sauce, and coconut milk. Early cooks had to adapt local ingredients like sour cream and anchovy to emulate the taste. But with the available mass transportation today, this has become much less of a barrier, and Thai food here has become much more authentic than before. Okay, I just bought some pod thai. Please point to a fact that food culture is a very good example of cultural hybridization in contrast to the hegemony theory. Unique food culture from a different country is welcome in the local scene, but it is ultimately changed to fit better into the community. Interestingly, both American food in Thailand and Thai food in the US were at first popular exclusively among the nostalgic immigrants and soldiers. This shows that food culture is such an indispensable part of an identity, acting as an anchor to remind the migrated people of their roots. However, it is clear that the appeal of a different culture from the local one attracted the local customers as well. Overall, I think the hybridization of foreign food serves as an example of a positive effect of capitalism and globalization, producing such interesting menus unique to each area. For me personally, the most important part of the globalization of food is that without it, I wouldn't be able to find Thai food to eat here, in this country so far away from home, yet so closely interconnected in the cultural context. 